we are here at the crime scene, and it seems as though the end card died this. Okay, boys, time to turn off the news and go to bed. Ma, we were in the middle of the news. The man was in the middle of his sentence. He was saying, the end card died this. You'll finish tomorrow, boys. Please go to bed. Hey, welcome to our scene on endocarditis, represented by this crime scene over here, where the end card, this is the end card over here, and the end card died this morning. Now, in the news show, the kids were only able to see that the end card died this. End card died this before the mother turned off the show. But end card died this is going to help us remember endocarditis. In this scene, we're going to talk about endocarditis. And specifically, we're going to talk about the symptoms seen in a patient with endocarditis, as well as the microbes involved in the pathogenesis of this disease. So let's begin. So endocarditis is infection of the inner layer of the heart, often affecting one or more of the valves. So here we have the end card dead on the floor. We're not so interested in the end card in the scene, we're more interested in the bystander. Let's take a look at her. This bystander over here is going to teach us a lot about endocarditis. So the first thing we note over here is that she has a fever. One of the most common symptoms of endocarditis is a fever. This mermaid always follows her wherever she goes. This mermaid is going to help us remember the murmur. Murmur is another extremely common symptom in endocarditis. Take a look at this moth over here flying near her eye. Maybe we can even say that this moth is flying near her retina. This red moth. Red moth for roth. Roth spots is another symptom seen in endocarditis. Roth spots are round white spots on the retina, and that's why this red moth over here has these white spots to help us remember that, and it's surrounded by hemorrhage. On her hand over here, she has some sort of wizard. We'll call it the Wizard of Oz. You know what, let's just call it Oz. Oz for Osler nodes. Osler nodes is another symptom of endocarditis, which are basically ouchy raised lesions on the finger or on the toe pads, and this is due to the immune complex deposition. Then by her nail bed, she has this, this bloody splinter sticking out. We'll call it the splinter hemorrhage. Splinter hemorrhages on the nail bed is another symptom of endocarditis. Now you might have noticed that her face is not really a face, it's really a heart that's open. And we can see the mitral valve over here conveniently. And it's got a one in it. And this helps us remember that mitral valve is the most frequently one involved in endocarditis. The tricuspid may also be involved. And this is usually associated with IV drug abuse. And that's why she has this syringe going through her tricuspid valve. Okay, now let's take a look at what she's walking on. She's walking on a street that's famously called the Janeway. It's called Janeway because it kind of looks like a lady named Jane. So people call this the Janeway, which helps us remember the Janeway lesions, which may present on the palm or sole of the foot, which present with small, painless erythematous lesions. Okay, now that we spoke about the symptoms seen in a patient with endocarditis, let's talk about the microbes which may be involved in the pathogenesis of endocarditis. So whoever killed the end card is escaping in this bus over here, and they covered up this bus with a bunch of signs so no one could see through the windows. Let's take a look on top of the bus. We noticed this staff of Oreos that they stuck on top. I don't know why they did that, but they stuck this staff of Oreos which reminds us of Staph aureus. And next to it, there's this large vegetable to help us remember the large vegetations seen with Staph aureus infection on previously normal valves. Staph aureus has a high virulence, and that's why it's on the high part of the bus over here. Let's contrast that with these ants over here. These are the very weird ants. We'll call them the very weird ants. Very weird ants for viridins. Viridins group strep has a low virulence, and that's why it's on the lower part of this bus over here, and is associated with smaller vegetations, and that's why we have this small vegetable that these ants are eating. And these usually present on congenitally abnormal or diseased valves. The reason why they have this dental tooth next to them is just to help us remember that strep viridins is the one most associated with dental procedures. And this is because viridins is part of the normal oral flora. Okay, what else do we have over here? Let's take a look at these signs. We noticed that they stuck these random signs on the wall so no one would see through the windows. Don't try drugs, which is going to help us remember try for tricuspid valve, and drugs, because as we mentioned before, drug abuse is most associated with the tricuspid valve infection. 
with Oreos candy or while wearing suits. Oreos for Staph aureus, candy for Candida, and while wearing suits for Pseudomonas. Staph aureus, Candida, and Pseudomonas are most associated with tricuspid valve endocarditis. And then under this, we see the sign that says EpiPens are bogus. This is going to help us remember two other bacteria which are associated with endocarditis. Epi for Staph epidermidis, which are often found on prosthetic valves, and bogus for bovis, strep bovis, strep bovis, which is present in colon cancer. Finally, let's get to BERT. BERT shows up in our scene on Bartonella. Bartonella species may be a cause of endocarditis. And then behind the bus over here, we see these cocks, you know, the chickens, the cocks, the cocks drinking the burning tea. Cocks with burning tea for Coxiella bernetti. If culture is negative in endocarditis, it is most likely Coxiella bernetti or Bartonella species. And over here we see these letters that they randomly stuck in the door over here. Maybe it's keeping the door closed or something. I'm not sure. But the HASEC is going to help us remember the HASEC organisms. That native valve endocarditis may be due to the HASEC organisms. Haemophilus, Aggregatobacter, formerly known as Actinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, Iconella, and Kingella. And finally, we see these two guys over here running away. These guys are not bacteria, and this helps us remember that endocarditis may be non-bacterial, secondary to a hypercoagulable state, and that's why we have this Jello guy over here. Jello reminds us of hypercoagulability, and he has this loop coming out of his head to help us remember lupus. And then there's this monster guy over here who reminds us of malignancy, as endocarditis may be secondary also to malignancy. Okay, let's just end off this scene with a few high-yield facts. The first is that endocarditis may be associated with glomerulonephritis, septic arterial, or pulmonary emboli. And the second is, the initial test for endocarditis is going to be a blood culture, and this is because cultures are extremely sensitive for endocarditis. So if a patient comes in with a fever and with murmurs, we need to get the cultures, and we start the patient on antibiotics. What antibiotics are given to treat endocarditis? Well, for Staph aureus, it depends on whether or not it's methicillin resistant or methicillin sensitive. If it's methicillin sensitive, we give oxacillin, nafcillin, or cefazolin. If it's methicillin resistant, we give it vancomycin or daptomycin. For viridins, we give penicillin or ceftriaxone for a month, unless the patient is beta-lactam allergic, in which case we give it vancomycin. In the case of Bartonella, we give ceftriaxone or doxycycline plus gentamicin. In the case of Coxiella, we give doxycycline and hydroxychloroquine, which is an anti-malarial. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this incredibly weird scene on endocarditis. Take care.